everyone. Uh, welcome to the Three Martini Lunch uh, with Rockstar Connect. Uh, if you, Sarah, I want to mute everybody here for now. Hey, welcome everyone uh, to the Three Martini Lunch with Rockstar Connect. I always have a technical difficulty whenever I start these events. Uh, that's almost uh, part and parcel of the event. So be prepared for lots of mistakes and gaffes on my part ahead of time. Uh, I want to welcome our panelists today and I want to welcome our attendees. Uh, we are live broadcasting this event all over uh, Facebook to all of our different groups. Uh, we Our setting today is we have uh, two pan groups of panelists. Uh, we have panelists going uh, from two to three and also three to four. For the people that are panelists from two to three, you're extra super special lucky. If you want to stay on for the second hour, uh, you're welcome to stay on for the second hour. It depends on your stamina. Uh, today, uh, we're going to discuss a lot of different issues that are relevant, of course, uh, all of you are fantastic networkers. You are members of the Rockstar Connect community. Uh, you may be hosts with Rockstar Connect or you may be attendees. Uh, regardless, you're bringing uh, something valuable to the table. Uh, we have, uh, we, we've divided up the panelists in such a way this time that everyone has an opportunity uh, to briefly introduce themselves uh, to the people that are listening. This is just like a Rockstar Connect networking event. So, while this is going on, we have a virtual lounge, uh, the HIO virtual lounge, where people are able to drop in and they're able to do one-on-one -on -one actual uh, video face-to-face -face networking with one another. If you've set up your profile and they will teach you how to do that in the, the virtual lounge, uh, you can share your Facebook page, you can share your LinkedIn, you can share Dropbox and Google Drive as long as everything is uh, rated G and uh, you know, acceptable for all audiences. That's the most important thing. Uh, here on the panel, we have uh, expert networkers and people that are, are helping other people uh, during, the, you know, during the, the coronavirus and during this shutdown. Uh, you're welcome to put questions if you're one of the attendees in the chat. And uh, Sarah Elliott, uh, my wife, and also uh, the Chief of Operations uh, for Rockstar Connect, and also uh, the creator and founder with me, will be taking your questions and sharing it with the group. In uh, addition uh, to that, uh, Kim Patchen, who is one of our uh, Rockstar Connect concierge, will be manning the virtual lounge. If you need any assistance there, you can uh, put it up in the chat in the virtual lounge, and she will help uh, help you with that. Sarah has all of our panelists' information, and she's going to drop it periodically into the chat so that you can connect with them and uh, start uh, you know start your relationship together because this is a national event. So this is even bigger than your local Rockstar Connect event that you, you go to normally. If you're one of, the, one of the participants in the chat, if you've gone to a Rockstar Connect event, feel free to put your information there. Uh, you, you can uh, drop your contact information into the chat so that we can make that available to people that want to connect with you. And you can also do that in the virtual lounge. That was a lot of talking on my part, a lot of talking, but there's new people that are coming in all the time and they, they want to have an understanding of what's going on. We have a, a very uh, special guest today uh, who has not been a panelist on the show. Don't feel nervous. Everyone's getting nervous to see who's special. You're all special. But I'm going to throw it out to, to Rhonda Sher. She has been a big friend of Rockstar Connect from the very beginning. She's introduced us to many of our Rockstar Connect hosts around the country. And uh, she is an expert in LinkedIn Connections. I'm going to throw it over to you if you could just give yourself a, a, a very brief introduction. We're going to learn more about you as we, as we all speak with one another. Oh, okay, I'm unmuted. You're well, unmuted. It's, it's really nice to be here. I am a huge fan of Rockstar Connect and of you and Sarah. It's uh, just an awesome program. So doing this virtually is um, just actually an honor to be here. 
So my name is Rhonda Schur. Um, I'm a LinkedIn expert. I created something called the Schur Method to unlock LinkedIn. Um, in essence, what I do is I help people to present themselves on LinkedIn in a way that they're unforgettable, prospect in a way that isn't salesy at all, and ultimately end up with profit. Um, and I've been doing this for a very long time. I have over tw almost 25,000 connections on LinkedIn, um, have helped people to upgrade their profiles like Steven um, and many of the rock stars actually that I've worked with had my own um, live rock star connect event, which I love when we are not in this um, sheltered in place. And, um, and my goal really in essence is to help every entrepreneur and business person get out of witness protection on LinkedIn so that they can get found for the professional that they are. And the only reason somebody wouldn't want to do business with them is they didn't like them because their profile would be bulletproof. So that's me in a nutshell. Well, thank you. We're going to get back to you with some more deeper questions because everybody knows how important LinkedIn is. And LinkedIn has become much more important in, in the last year and even more so in the last two months. Uh, I'm going I'm to jump over to Florida to Doug McGurk. I want to congratulate him. His new book comes out today. Could you tell us real quickly about yourself and uh, where people can get that book? We'll drop it into the chat as well. Absolutely. So thank you, Stephen, and uh, great to meet everyone here. Uh, so my name is Doug McGurk, and I am a freedom hacker. And what that means is I help people create emotional and uh, spiritual, financial, ultimately freedom. Uh, what we find is when we do not show up as our best version of ourselves, we are unable to execute and implement all of the strategies made available. We are unable to learn as effectively and be as present. Um, and I uh, just sort of updated a book I'd written called The Heart of Networking. Um, on, my, on my years on the road with Tony Robbins, one of the ways I built my business was through networking. Um, that's why I love uh, Rockstar. I connected with um, Michael Wisniewski and Steven and uh, just love the philosophy behind what you guys are doing and, and the way you do it. And it's one of the best and least expensive ways to market yourself. Uh, and I'm sure like some of you may have found that there are some serial networkers out there who they come to every networking event and then hope to see you at the next networking event, but never actually follow through, book a meeting, um, or you have the other one who uh, tries to close you on whatever their product or service is in the first sentence. So um, the book is really geared towards helping people be more effective go-givers, uh, more effective in being remembered by actually networking and helping everyone they meet as opposed to just uh, you know looking to get something out of it. It's more about giving. And then I added some content because now we're all virtually networking. So had to ask, uh, ask you know, the, the better question, how can we be more effective doing these Zoom meetings and so forth. Uh, the book is called The Heart of Networking and I'll, I'll share, uh, I'll, I'll send you Stephen the, the link and all that so you can, um, you know. Yeah, that would be terrific. If you just can just drop it into the chat uh, when you okay, get an opportunity sure. and that every way everyone can see it. Uh, I, I, David, I, I was going to call on you, but you got that phone up. Are you ready for me? Yeah, it was actually uh, Tommy asked me how to join this, so I was trying to help him out. Uh, we can get him. We can get Tommy a link. Uh, Sarah will send it. Have someone send it over to him. Uh, hey, so uh, David, David uh, is a very impressive person. As you can see, he he is a lot younger than the rest of us on the panel, but he serves a very important purpose. His goal in life, ever since he graduated university, is to help people get out of student debt. And a lot of people today have questions regarding what do they do about their student debt. Not everybody who has student debt is in their 20s. I know people my age that still have have student debt and they're concerned about it in the age of COVID-19. If you want to just give me a brief introduction, we're going to come back to you with some questions about how you can help people with student debt immediately. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for that uh, introduction. So I was able to graduate college and I was introduced to a very influential man who's actually on this call. His name is Mark Shear. And, you know, graduating school with my Series 7 and trying to think about what I should be doing in terms of financial planning, Mark opened my eyes up to financial planning to help individuals eliminate their debt. So when I was talking to him and going through the process of learning about how to do this, I asked him, what about student loans? 
because we were graduating. It's all we were concerned about was understanding how we went to school for four years, but we're supposed to be paying this debt for 20 years. Didn't seem fair. So I spent the next few months while I was graduating, learning everything there was to know about student loans because I positioned myself as saying, firstly, I'm a student loan expert. After that, I'm a financial advisor. And we put together structured financial plans with one goal, understand where your money's going towards your debt and use it as efficiently as possible to eliminate your debt. So our average student loan client is out in under four years and all their debt instead of 20. And does it make a difference what age you are? Can this be for, you know, someone just graduating and someone who maybe is paying off a graduate degree? No, unfortunately, student loans don't care how old you are. So we can help anyone. The other thing to understand is with student loans, they follow you through bankruptcy. So again, they're with you no matter how old you are. You got to pay them. So we help you. Thank, thank you very much, David. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to th throw this over to, uh, I'm here in North Carolina. Some of our panelists are here from North Carolina. Others are from Florida, California, you name it. Well, I guess that's it. Florida, California, North Carolina seems to be you know, what we have on this panel. Uh, this is my first opportunity uh, to meet uh, Dr. Holly Selinger, although her name comes up frequently. Uh, she is a, a local celebrity, but also known on the national scene. What do you bring into the panel today, Holly? Holly, we need to unmute you there. Can you unmute yourself? I got it. I got uh, it. All right. Um, yeah, I really appreciate being able to be here today. Um, I have been attending rock star events um, probably for at least four or five years now, but it took uh, Scott Rutter and Dominic Bettistella to really get me involved. Um, so I really enjoy the networking opportunities. Um, I actually am a corporate speaker, trainer, and consultant. And I have been, my business has been uh, exploding <laughs> recently uh, with people wanting to do online training and learning and have their conferences and symposiums moved online um, rather than in person. And so that's what I do. I do uh, topics in three key areas, leadership, professional development, and technology. Thank you. Our, you know, our panelists, we're networking too. Some of my panelists here, they're old friends. They know each other. You know, Mark, Tommy, Bob, David, uh, they know each other. They've also met Mark on other calls. Uh, but, you know, you guys are networking too. And some of the, connect I always like to make connections. I really feel that, that Rhonda and Holly and Mark and Tommy uh, should definitely get together to, to see how you can help one another. That's a connection I like to make right off the top. And uh, Holly, you and Doug would hit it off really well. I can see you doing some joint Zooms, uh, maybe you know even a triple with uh, Rhonda you know, sometime coming up in the next week. I haven't met you before, Jenny. I've heard really good things. I'm going to talk to you, talk to you soon. But uh, we have Andrea Proctor from HIO, who is our, our partner in the virtual lounge. She's going to explain to you a little bit what's going on in the virtual lounge and, and how to interact with one another. Thank you for joining us, Andrea. You have to unmute yourself. Go Hi. ahead. Thank you for uh, having me on here. I love coming on to these Rockstar Connect uh, webinars because there are so many great panelists. Always a great time with the networkers, too. So Rockstar Connect actually decided to do something awesome for their networkers and attendees and partner with an app to where you can go kind of beyond the Zoom call and join HIO and be in a virtual lounge. So what that does is if at any point during this call or after you want to network with some people who you met here, you go on to HIO, you find the event. I know the link is in the actual chat of the Zoom and you'll be able to either chat one-to-one -one video call style. So kind of like a FaceTime or you can send direct messages. You can swap all of your contact info and just schedule follow-ups um, because you guys know networking is about the follow-up and the relationship building. So not only meeting people today, but setting something on your calendar to follow up with them next week, learn a little bit about them and uh, have a good time just getting to know a lot of people while we're all stuck inside. Thank you, Andrew. Because of, because of the HIO app, you know, Rockstar Connect people, when the events are over, and we have events this evening that I'd like you to, to, to join, uh, some of the, the panelists here are going to do a little bit more in-depth of a structured event uh, tonight. So I'd like you to join that. 
but you can keep on networking and having those face-to-face -face individual uh, video chats and share the information you want to share in the lounge. Sarah's going to drop uh, some in more information in the lounge, and Kim, uh, our Rockstar Connect concierge, will be in the lounge to assist you with any of your needs if you have any questions. I'd like uh, now uh, to uh, welcome uh, Andrew Pierce. He is our Rockstar Connect host in uh, Winston-Salem. Not only, excuse me, in Wilmington, I'm sorry, and it says it right there on the screen, in Wilmington, which is sort of casual on the beach, thus the, the baseball cap. His event is more flip-flops and t-shirts than uh, suits and sport coats. Uh, you guys in Miami will get that, but in Miami, it's like anything goes. You can wear anything you want to an event or nothing at all. Uh, so Andrew is not only does real estate and he has his event and he's a chef, he's an expert in uh, utilizing social media uh, to generate uh, not only uh, paid leads, but organic leads and working a community. So he and I, we share a lot of information back and forth because that's how I generate my business as well. So welcome, Andrew. Just, you know, a quick sentence about what you want people uh, out there in the audience to know about and what type of questions can they ask you? Thanks, Stephen. Um, pretty much anything about social media and how to A, create content, but also repurpose that one thing you already created to span multiple uses and multiple platforms. That is the easiest way to stay in front of your audience, especially during a time like this. And post pictures of food. Food, puppies, and houses, man. Everybody right. clicks on those. Yeah, people think that they love to see kids, but not so much. It's food, puppies, and houses. People love to see that. Hey, uh, I, I want to give uh, uh, a little bit of attention to Mark Share. Mark Share is down in uh, in uh, in Miami, Florida, and South Florida. He has his event in the Coral Gables area. He lives in uh, Brickell, and he's been hosting his event in down there in South Florida for three years. And people say he's the Rockstar Connect host with the most. Why don't you tell people uh, what you do, how you do it, and uh, we're going to jump in, you know, if you could share a little bit about what you know about the CARE Act, because we've had some good conversations with you about that. You have to unmute yourself, Mark. There we go. Well, thanks for that, Stephen. I'm glad to be here on the Three Martini Lunch. I think I've already had two, so one more to go. And uh, the good news is I don't have to drive very far today, right? Um, glad to see David and Team Hayek. It's just Bob now. We're all on the same team. And what we do, David talked about it a little bit, we specialize in showing people typically how to eliminate all their debt, whether it's mortgages, credit cards, student loans, typically in nine years or less without spending any more than they're currently spending. We're not debt consolidation. We're not bankruptcy specialists or debt restructuring. We truly teach people how to become financially literate and eliminate their debt. Um, the CARE Act, obviously, that's very interesting that you brought that up, Stephen. I always ask people, and I'll ask you, what do you think, why, why was the CARE Act passed? And I'll open it up to anybody on the panel who can tell us why the CARE Act was passed. Bob Hayek wants to answer that question. If you could unmute yourself, Bob. Except for Bob. Someone besides Bob or David. Okay. Go ahead down at the bottom. Tommy. Tommy Episcopo. Tommy's excluded too. Just, just people that aren't on our group. Hey, uh, Doug, uh, do you have any idea? You're muted, Doug. Um, my understanding is, uh, forgive my ignorance on it, but is to stimulate the economy, keep people getting paid uh, while they're potentially not necessarily working, and um, hopefully uh, also keep uh, businesses uh, open, paying any of their bills and so forth. That's, that's a great answer. Anybody else? Nobody else wants to venture into that? Well, I mean, I think it's you know, to keep the economy from completely crashing. Well, 
here's the way we look at it. Those are all good answers, but the real underlying reason that it was needed is because America is broke. We're just coming off of the biggest 12 year bull run the stock market's ever seen, an awesome run in the real estate market, yet people are broke and don't have the money to survive this. So it just what makes what we do so much more important because when I'm gone, you could talk to David, Bob, or Tommy. All of our clients are calling us, thanking us for educating them. And a quick story, I've got a gal who she owns a small business and um, she called me up. She goes, thank you, Mark, because we're getting out of debt in 8.7 years instead of 18. She's five years into the plan and she's got $50,000 seen in account that she can get to without a 10% penalty. You know, she gets the money. She got the money in 48 hours and all her neighbors are all worried about how they're going to pay their mortgage, pay for this, pay for that. And choose this. Thank you. So we really enjoy what we do. And the best thing for us is when we get the thank yous. And that's what we're all about. And which leads us to why we like working with Steven so much and Rockstar, because the networking community, it's all about giving and helping. You know, our favorite thing is we like to ask people, and most of the rock star hosts are like this. What can we do to help you succeed? And that's what makes this such a great community. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Mark. Hey, you know, and, and that's a that's a really good point. And that's what, what I find is great about you know Mark's Mark's team. They their events, they do a lot of one-on-ones afterwards. And those one-on-ones are never about selling what their business does. It's always about learning about the other person's business. And that happens to be a great technique because when you do learn about other people's businesses, you're learning about their needs and how you can service them as well. And that's going to help them. And it's also going to create uh, revenue uh, potentially for yourself. And a lot of people today, uh, I mean, networking is probably more important right now than any other time in your business career. Absolutely the most important time. Not because you have time, because you may not be working or, or anything else. If you're an entrepreneur and you're a rock star connect attendee, you never stop working. We're used to getting sometimes getting paid an awful lot and then other times not making any money or revenue whatsoever. And we always are filling our pipeline and we're always making those all too important uh, connections in order to serve other people. Someone who's very good at that is uh, you know, Mark Roberts. Mark, if you can unmute yourself. Uh, I spoke with Mark this week and, and his company has always been local with some national clients. And now he is taking the opportunity uh, to expand his footprint nationally, and he's having great success. He's one of those people that right now is probably making more revenue than he's made in the last three years uh, from his networking efforts. So, Mark, if you could tell us a little bit about what you do, and, and am I lying or am I telling the truth? You're right on there, as, as usual. Uh, thank you, Stephen. And hi to the panelists and all the attendees. Uh, yeah, Mark Roberts, uh, representing two companies. Uh, the main one is the Office Nerds, and hence, Erwin behind me here. He's our, he's our little character guy. Uh, what we do is we do virtual bookkeeping, virtual office management, and business support for the small expanding companies. Uh, and because we are already set up to, to be virtual, that side of the business has exploded with everything that we're, we're facing. Um, a, a big part of that is now people realize that it can be done virtually. They've accepted it. Um, and people are much happier to uh, have us log into the computers or the the QuickBooks online and, and not be in front of them or near them as we're doing the social distancing. Are you sort of shocked because like a month ago, nobody would do, would have done that? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> it, it's a complete paradigm shift. Uh, and this was always our business model. And, and it's funny because we are local to so many of the clients that we serve. They always want to meet in person. They want to meet for coffee. Um, because we're stuck to a desk and we're using this camera and everything else, we've become a lot more effective. Uh, and because of that, we've taken on a lot more work too. At the same time, I'm doing a lot more networking in large part because of this. And now I'm talking to people nationally. Um, 
and we're we're having a, a lot of fun. I feel bad as people struggling to say we're we're doing real well, but we well. But there's a good thing about that because you're servicing your community, and you're going to need you know more people to help you do what you're doing. So if there is anyone out there would like to speak to Mark possibly about offering some of your services to his clients, he wants to offer full service to them. Drop your information uh, there in the box. Hey, I'm going to uh, jump over uh, now to one of, our, one of our favorite panelists, one of the best hosts uh, in the country. And I say that about all of you because you're fantastic, but he does an incredible job with his event down in Jupiter, Florida. Tommy, if you could tell to everybody what you do and, and, and why you take time out of your busy day to come be on this panel. Well, first of all, <laughs> it's the best way to meet people right now. Nobody wants to see you. So um, it, it couldn't come along at a, at a better time. Um, I don't know. I, I just think networking is really the lifeblood of any business. And you just, you're going to have to do it. You know, whether you do it this way, when we get back to normal, we'll do it in, per in person. But you have to meet with, you have to find a way to get yourself in front of the people outside your event. We do it pretty simple. We have a simple little system that we use to do it. Um, and the connections are made at the event. The sales are made outside the event. That's the way I look at it. So uh, I flew down uh, to Florida to personally interview you because you had done so well with your event very quickly. You were generating a lot of meaningful connections, and those meaningful connections were turning into commissions for you as well. Yeah. When, when your events, they appear to be completely unstructured, but you do it the Rockstar Connect way. They are structured over by the money seat where everyone's checking in. What do you say to people, or what does your hostess, uh, what, is, what do they say to people when they come in the front door to welcome them? And, well, and how can people use that maybe now when they're talking to people online? Well, we, that is the spot that's most important at these events. You need to have someone up there that actually knows a little bit about what it is that you do. So my girls are instructed to say, hello, this is Tommy. He's your host for this evening. What Tommy does is he teaches businesses and individuals how to eliminate their debt. He, become, he teaches everybody how to become their own bank. That alone is usually enough for someone to say, you could help me. And then she puts a little star next to the name and that person gets called. That's fantastic. And uh, it, as far as that type of networking, have you ended up, I know people have used your services. Yes. Have you been able to start using other people's services of people that come to your event? Yes, I actually put a new air conditioner in my house from the guy that comes to my event. <laughs> I hope he gave you a good deal. He did. Yeah, very good. There's some people here that I, am, I have briefly met before. Uh, the, Alan Christensen is with us today. He is in the, the tech world. And we're going to get his perspective on, on how he is changing his business, which I imagine is not too much. Go ahead. Go ahead, Alan. Hey, thanks for having me on. I was in the tech world. I, I now own the Christensen Agency, and I represent uh, speakers, trainers, and edutainers. So I have a group of 14 speakers right now that do technology training, that do keynote speaking, um, that do security uh, training. Um, so I've got a whole um, a whole corral full of uh, speakers right now. So are, I, had, I had been in the software business for over 35 years. Are you more relevant now than you were uh, two months ago, your company and oh, your services? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I Like I said, I've always sold software. So we've been doing software demonstrations over the internet for years. I, I'd be sitting in DC and I can't do a you know, I'm not flying to Hong Kong to try to sell some software. So I'm used to doing these kind of things. Initially, when this all started, we had a bunch of cancellations, uh, speaking uh, um, engagements. And within a week, people started calling me back saying, you know, we can do this over the internet. You know, we, we, we can do the training. Uh, now, the larger conventions, like I had one in Myrtle Beach uh, that got canceled, and that just got shut down completely. 
because people want to go to that kind of convention. They want to go golfing and they want to be at the beach and really nobody can do anything down there right now. But yeah, it's, it's really taken off. We're, we're very, very busy, um, especially with the technology training part of it. And people are, you know, people have their employees sitting at home right now and they would rather them do something than do nothing. Uh, the only complaint I've had from my speakers is they, when usually they're in a, they're we're in, a, in a situation where they can walk around and, and, you know, do their thing. Now they have to stand in one place sometimes for three, four hours at a time in front of the screen. So that's the only biggest complaint that we have right now. What do you think of uh, all these virtual screens? They're sort of cool, but sort of weird, aren't they? As um, people disappear and, and reappear in front of the screen? Are, are you asking me that? Yeah, I'm asking you that. Yeah. I don't mind. Um, in fact, uh, the networking piece, I do a lot of networking, obviously, a lot of your events and just out and about. And nothing's ever going to replace the, the, the handshake and the hug. But I'm getting more accomplished in a shorter period of time and meeting more people. You know, you walk into these networking events and, you know, you walk around the room, you're trying to see who's who. Do you know anybody there? Do you, you meet someone new? Now on these networking events, most of the time by the end of the event, I've met everybody that came to that networking event. I can pick and choose very easily who I want to, you know, hook up with and who I don't. And if the face-to-face -face one, like I said, nothing's ever going to replace a handshake. But uh, I like it. I don't have to drive anywhere. I don't have to try to rush anywhere. Um, and I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting much more accomplished. Yeah, I, you know, a digital is a fantastic tool. I mean, I wrote the book, uh, uh, Mingle, the Art of Face-to-Face -face, uh, Networking uh, in the Digital Era. And I said that, you know, digital is very important. It's a tool that we use. But I got to tell you, uh, it's a little more difficult for me to do business right now because I don't feel like I'm really seeing people directly in the eye. I'm not offering, you know, I'm doing my best to offer 100% quality service, but I know that when I can meet someone face to face, I have a real understanding and empathy for their needs. Uh, that being said, you know, we're, we're looks like we're going to come out of this in a few months. Rockstar Connect is ready, and uh, we have all our events already booked to go forward and have uh, live events. And uh, right now we do have some cities and markets available. So if you'd like to know more, you can go to the Rockstar Connect website, go to contact and uh, schedule an appointment to see if you would qualify uh, to be a Rockstar Connect host. Uh, this e you know, we do, we're doing evening uh, virtual networking events uh, every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night. And uh, tonight, uh, one of our hosts, Bob Hayek uh, from Port St. Lucie, uh, he doesn't know it yet, but we're, we've structured his event a little bit. I'm going to talk to him about it more. He's going to be hosting the first virtual version of Success is Contagious, which is a national physical event that we uh, released just prior to the shutdown that enabled people to share their successes and help other people collaboratively grow their successes. So basically a much more structured uh, version of our evening event. Uh, as far as uh, success is concerned, Bob and uh, Vivian, if you guys are unmuted there, uh, what is your concept of successes today? What was your success this week and what was your success today? And that can be business related, that can be family related, or you just showed up to be on screen today. No, I watched my solar meter sending energy back to the power company. Gosh, I wonder how much that's worth worth right now. That is a big success. And I made a joke yesterday. I posted that uh, I wanted to buy a million barrels of oil. How many barrels of oil could I put in my garage? And one of our Rockstar Connect hosts said to me, "You should. what you should do is you should buy 40 billion barrels of oil they're going to give you $40 billion, go buy a state like Montana and then store the oil there. And I think I said, I'm, if you can put that deal together, I'm all for it. And I, I guarantee you that, you know, some of our, uh, some of our panelists could put together a deal like that. Hey, uh, Jenny Midgley, welcome. So content that sells content is king in a digital world. Uh, what are you doing in your business now? That's going to help other people. Are you giving anything away for free? Does everything have a cost? 
Uh, we're dropping your information, by the way, into the chat. Great, thank you. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me today. Um, I'm actually a brand and marketing photographer, um, and I cannot use my camera. So um, I also help my clients um, create really great content that attracts their ideal customers. So typically we do that through a combination of storytelling images that we then pair with a content system. Um, so now I'm just kind of, I've pivoted and I do everything now coaching my clients to create content systems that work for them. Um, because at the end of the day, right? Like people buy from whom they know, like, and sell and trust. And how do people get to know, like, and trust you if you don't put yourself out there? So, um, you know, I work with people to really kind of develop their stories and their personal brands. Um, I have a lot of free stuff out there on my Facebook page, um, tons of free content. I have a group course that I'm piloting. Like there's just a lot of stuff that needs to, um, to be out there for people to learn. Right. And, um, I feel like this, this time has done so much for people to see why it's important to have really quality content <laughs> to cut through all the noise because all the algorithms are out the window. You can't trust like anything that we, that us experts knew before, like we can't even trust what we knew because um, everything's changed. So yeah. Well, as far as, you know, right now people have content, mm -hmm. but it's not curated in any way. Right. Is this the time for people to dig in and start looking at their old material and using it? Like I'm taking, yes. You know, as a real estate agent, I'm taking every video that I've ever had produced over the last 10 years, and that's, you know, hundreds of videos. Yeah. Hours and hours. I'm giving it over to the Rockstar Connect video production team so that they can utilize that in a different way to tell a different type of story. Yep. So I can show the type of homes that are sold in my area, even though those homes aren't for sale. Currently. Exactly. Exactly. And so one thing that I really like that you said there was about repurposing. It's not about reinventing the wheel you don't always have to come up with new stuff. It's not about the new stuff. It's about the quality and the intention of what you're putting stuff out there. So yes, go find your old stuff, <laughs> repurpose it, figure out how to tell the story in a different way. And, um, you know, people will start to take notice. Well, I mean, I do that. I look through posts that I've been uh, successful with that have had impact, you know, going back through my library of, of, of you know over a decade of posts and i'm making them relevant today so i don't feel under stress you know trying to come up with content i'm sure some of you most of your day is really really good until you start looking at your facebook feed and start reading all the negative garbage that's on there or you accidentally turn on the news and watch that stuff and say well that doesn't feel like my reality because i'm here in my safe space and in my beautiful home uh, with my family or with my pets. And by the way, that snoring you hear is my English Bull Terrier. <laughs> but if we try to move her out of the room, she won't just be snoring, she'll be barking. Right. And and now is the, the, the time to, you know, share things that will help people. Like, I made a post yesterday that's gotten incredible engagement now, and I've now shared it to a couple groups, where my wife and I, we switched sides of the bed last night we've been talking about it for two years it requires you know if you if you have a spouse changing sides of the bed it's a big deal you got to move your electronics the drawers everything and my fantastic wife sarah she did that yesterday she moved all the stuff from one end to the other and really it's something that that benefits me more than it benefits her during a quarantine that's the equivalent of a vacation right and so I made a post like that, and then all people were saying, hey, yeah, I'm doing stuff like that, too. I'm using the small bathroom in the house, so I feel like I'm in a hotel. Or we're sleeping in the guest bedroom for a change of pace. Right. I keep threatening to throw the kids out in a tent in the backyard and be like, pretend you're camping. <laughs> I, I mean, I think, you, I think you definitely have to do that. Uh, Steve, uh, Otto, you know, we're coming to you last but not least. Do you, do you want to tell us a little bit about how you're helping your clients today? and what they should be looking at in this environment. Well, hey, thanks for letting me join. This is my first uh, meeting with you guys. It's awesome content. Uh, yeah, I'm from uh, Naples, Florida. We have a great group down here as well, too. A lot of Floridians on the call. Who's, uh, your, who's your host down in Naples? Are you with Christy Castle? Yeah, Christy Castle, that's my host. Yeah, as a matter of fact, me and uh, 
Christy do some real estate together. Uh, I'm a broker here in Florida, although my main business is I work to promote home builders all over the US. I work for a digital marketing company. So I agree with Jenny that content is king. And, and I, I wanted to share some good news with you. You know, everybody, like you said, if you're watching any news channel, you think it's, it's uh, we're all hopeless out there. But, but actually on the new home building side, the, the people looking for new homes on Google's only down about 12% and, and conversion from those leads is at 50%. So those of you who do internet marketing out there, you know, people are on Facebook all day long now and, and, and they're dying to buy something, you know, so don't despair. Everything uh, is actually pretty good out there. Uh, you know, my, my only advice and, and what I share with our builders is, you, you know, and we play a game called Zoom, Zoom uh, bingo. You know, every time somebody says pivot, you get a, you get a square, you know, so p pivot's the key word. You, you got to, you got to pivot now. I mean, the, the Gen X, the Gen and the millennials really like buying things online. Almost 40% of them will buy a house sight unseen in California. And so they'll certainly buy smaller ticket items that way. You just need to, you just need to find the right, right technologies. I mean, out. That's the time you can service your sphere of influence and do good things for them. So I've been able to generate through my community pages that I work every single day because I am sort of a lazy networker. Uh, Facebook is an excellent digital tool so that I don't have to have a million one-on-ones and I can get my message into pe right into people's living rooms or bedrooms. Uh, so I've generated three listings that are coming on in the next week. I'm working with three buyers and tomorrow I'm going, you know, I'll, it, you need to hustle a little bit, everyone. Uh, all of you panelists that are listening as well. If you're a real estate agent, you only normally deal, you want to take business within 30 minutes, think about driving an hour and learning with your client about another area because you're perfectly equipped to do that. You're licensed in your state. Make relationships with uh, other agents and other MLSs. You can cut them in for a piece of the pie and get some business. I was able to refer some business to Andrew, for example, and he's out in, in Wilmington. So uh, I'm going out to Lake Gaston. I reached out to these people, other agents that are not in my MLS. And I said, I, you know, I need a code to get in. But guess what? You know, I'm going to take your property while they're there. I'm going to do a virtual tour. I'm going to post it in my Facebook page and give you a little bit of exposure. So those people now are allies. We're working together. We're on the same team. And you need to think about that in whatever, whatever your business is. So when I'm connecting, you know, Doug with Holly, uh, with Rhonda and, and Mark and so on and so forth. That's because we all have aspects of, of what we do that are going to help other people. Now, one of the reasons why I created Rockstar Connect is it, what I was doing felt very small and isolated when I was doing it by myself. And I would look at these big, giant corporations that are out there that have hundreds of people. And I said, you know, if I have a networking event, and I create a large sphere of influence in a network, I'm as big as any of those companies. Rhonda, Rhonda Shear, what's your thoughts on that? Because you're nationally known. And go ahead, unmute yourself. You're still muted. Hey, I'm gonna switch over to Holly and I'll come back to you. Holly, what are your thoughts on that? Can you unmute yourself? Yeah, repeat that question for me. All right, so the concept of networking so that you're not so small. I mean, it's tough if you think you're looking at the business world entirely on your own. And I'll jump right back to you, Rhonda, and give you the same question. Power networking on a local and national level, what does that do for you? Are you now a, an individual or are you a big company? And how does that work? Oh, no, that's a really good question. Um, I network as, as me, my company. I am a company of one anyway. Um, mm -hmm. But I network at all levels. Uh, most of the training that I do is for large organizations and professional associations. So they have local presence. We have a great, you know this, uh, because you're from here, we have Research Triangle Park where we have a, quite the collection of large organizations. And it's really good to be able to network in those areas 
but you also want to be able to work with the, the local businesses, the ones that are struggling right now and, and help them as well. So I do a lot of uh, networking in our area for all different levels. And I feel it's all extremely important to me and, and what I do. Excellent. Rhonda, do you want to expand on that? Yeah, like Dr. Holly, I'm an individual um, and I do network with, you know, individuals as well as companies. And one of the things that I've added that's been really valuable um, in my business is there are a lot of companies that have multiple employees, whether they're 1099 or they're, um, you know, actual employees. And, you know, a lot of them are in business development and they depend on networking to grow their business. And the biggest thing that they lack is really the skills on how to keep that pipeline full. And when you master LinkedIn, what happens is you never run out of people. You know, if, if you think about Rockstar, one of the ways that I build my events was I would send out invitations to people geographically in my area, inviting them to come to my Rockstar event. And one of the things that I've been doing now with a couple of companies is at a very, very affordable rate, because you have to be aware now that for many, money is really tight. You know, for a lot of people, they're doing better than they've ever done. And for others, it's a real struggle. So in being very cognizant of that, what I've put together is a program where it's a series of webinars where I teach people how to leverage this platform. And instead of having to invest on a one-on-one -on -one level, they get the same thing but they get it in a group. And the best part is that it's recorded so they can go back over and over again. And it's very, very tangible. You can look at it and put it into place. And the best part is some of the techniques, Stephen, you talk about posting and content. There's literally a technique where you can look at who's liked your posts and reach out to those people using video and get one out of three of those people to book an appointment with you. So if you're sitting there and saying, how can I fill my calendar, you know, network in your own backyard. How many people are you already connected to that you have not had a conversation with? You know, I like to think of those as your first cousins, the ones that show up at your wedding or your funeral, right? But imagine how much more you could get if your conversation was simply, let's have a virtual cup of coffee and let's keep it in the no sales zone. How can I help you? What are you looking for? And, um, and just reconnect. So like what Dr. Holly said, I would say, you know, just up level your game and go into your own network because now we have the time to actually make those reconnections, make them meaningful. Even if it's just a 20 minute Zoom call, you never know what's going to come from that. that that's fantastic. And, and I'm, I'm going to throw this over to Doug. Doug is very good at, at keeping in touch, much like you are, Rhonda. Everyone's saying you should reach out to your sphere of influence now. What if you've neglected your sphere of influence? You haven't spoken to them in six years. What would be a way, I mean, to reconnect with those people without seeming like you're just taking advantage of them? And I'm putting you on the spot here. Well, no, actually, that's a great, great point. And the truth is, is, I mean, I'm sure no one on this call here has ever experienced this, but maybe you know somebody who perhaps – got a call from somebody and then squirrel, and then you forgot to call them back, and then three days go by, and then another shiny object, and then a week goes by, and now you're like, oh man, I, I, I don't wanna, I'm embarrassed, I don't wanna call them back, and blah, blah, blah. Well, that also happens to other people, and 9.999 9 times out of 10, my experience has been when I've done that, They've been very happy. Oh my goodness, how are you? What's been going on? I know I dropped the ball. But half the time they take responsibility for it anyway and, and say, you know, feel bad about not reaching out themselves. Um, I have no qualms reaching out just to say hello to people who I haven't spoken to in a while. And literally it's, it's again, like Rhonda shared, no sales call, like just, hey, how are you? What's been going on? And then naturally they'll ask, hey, what have you been doing? And then it naturally progresses from there because odds are they probably are in some form of business as well. And when we come from giver's gain, if we're going, Hey, how can I support you? They'll tell you. And then when you offer some con you know, connection, support resource, they're very often open to reciprocation. Um, but yeah, I mean, to, to your point, and this isn't a sales pitch, but that's what I teach is the emotional mastery. Cause the only reason why someone wouldn't make that call is because they've got some, 
fear associated to it, some story they're telling about themselves or that person as to why they wouldn't take that call in the first place, when really it's all made up anyway. So once we get past that and just come from a, a genuine, authentic place of giving and wanting to connect with someone, the rest of it happens naturally. Is, is That's excellent. Is, is this a time... Alan Christensen, where we can bury the hatchet. Maybe we had a bad experience with someone in the past and we can take the opportunity to restart that relationship. That's a good question. I'd like to think I haven't uh, burned any relationships over the years. Um, yeah, I, I think you could. I mean, the worst that can happen is uh, they can say no to you. Um, so yeah, I, I guess you really, you really can um, online, especially. Uh, but once again, I like to think I haven't really burned that many relationships over the years. Well, I'll tell you, this is a time to see whether you're popular or not, who's taking your calls. I mean, I'm getting a little over, a little overwhelmed with calls. Tons of calls right now. You know, I'm known locally. I'm also known nationally. I got to run a business. You know, I got to run a few businesses. It's really difficult. Uh, Mark Roberts, you know, he represents a lot of his clients and he assists them and managing things like that. What tools are you using, Mark? What tools can you recommend to uh, our, our attendees? Well, the, the first tool I'd throw out to everyone is a, is a magic word that helps you all day long, and it's no. Feel free to say no to things. If it's not helping you, you know, get that no right out there. That's not bad. Uh, we're trying to automate as much as we can. Uh, we're using Calendry for our booking our appointments. Um, I always found that to be the biggest waste of time. Three calls to set up a call, uh, especially when you have multiple people. Uh, I've always used the calendar links. Uh, again, automating as much as you can for those repetitive tasks. Uh, we do have a, a part-time staff and she takes care of the calendar. Anything that I don't need to touch, you know, get rid of it. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, was gonna Give say, me I had a great example. I, I used to teach a, how to start a business class to uh, the chamber when I was back up in Boston. And I offered one time, you know, who wants $10? Basically to make sure people were paying attention to me. Uh, so half the class raises their hand. The other half goes, could you repeat that? Um, and then what I would do is say, you know, pick a winner and say, okay, here's $10. Now I want an hour of your time. They would slide that $10 back to me going, my time is way more than $10. Great. How many things are you doing you could hire a $10 happy face to do? Um, right. Any one of those tasks, you know, there's a multitude of apps and policies and procedures, but just identifying those and getting them off your plate is going to be the, the big yeah. thing. Hey, Rhonda is, is the, the queen of, of scheduling phone calls. She's been using uh, one form of calendar uh, booking or another in the years that I've known her and always getting a little bit better. Uh, she uses a technique, and, and I'll let her talk about it a little bit more, where she can actually make revenue right on the spot using her calendar. Can you explain a little bit how that works, Rhonda? Well, I use Simply Book Me, and it doesn't really matter. I like Book Like a Boss, Calendarly. It doesn't really matter which one you use as long as you use it. Uh, but one of the things I like about Simply Book Me is that there's actually a part on there where people can just sign up for your service. So for example, one of the things I do is I offer a consultation on Zoom to give somebody a profile audit. And you know, and I'll oftentimes just find money in PayPal where people have just booked, you know, for the paid appointment. Um, the other thing that I wanted to add as well, and this is a great way to reconnect, is if you have a resource that people don't know about that you can share that's free, that's one of the easiest ways to engage by saying, you know, I found this amazing resource. And, and one of the things I've been doing is most people pay for Zoom, right? And they pay, you know, anywhere from what, 40 to 100 bucks a month. Well, there's actually a way you can get Zoom for $10 a month. In fact, if you send me an email, I'll send you that link. And um, one of the things that I do is I basically say, look, I know that t things are tough right now and you're probably going virtual. I found a resource that can probably save you about $1,000 a year. If you're interested, I'm not gonna sell you anything but send me, uh, you know, book some time on my calendar and I'm happy to give it to you. I won't put it in writing. So again, it's just being a resource, you know, always coming from that giver's game. And, you know, what can I do to help you? It's kind of like my, that TV show, um, New Amsterdam. I love that show because all the guy says is, how can I help? That's his tagline. And if you can adopt that tagline, how can I help? 
how many people can you help? Somebody's going to say, how can I help you? It's reciprocal. Yeah, I mean, the, the best line you can use, uh, you know, best thing you can say to someone is, what are you trying to achieve and how can I help you achieve it? Uh, first, you know, they, they appreciate it. But beyond that, you actually know what your role is in the business life of that person at that point. There, you may have no role whatsoever, but that's the best way to elicit immediate response. And so we have a lot of people in the virtual lounge and the HIO lounge. If you'd like to join the HIO lounge, uh, we're dropping in the chat uh, a link so that you can get there and you can do some one-on-one. -on -one. We're coming up on the three o'clock hour and some of our speakers will be jumping into the lounge uh, to talk to you one-on-one -on -one and uh, give you a little free seven-minute consultation. It's like a speed networking room in there, just like you're going to one of the events. Uh, tonight, uh, we do have an event at six o'clock. It's gonna be hosted uh, by uh, uh, Bob Hayek and his wife, Vivian. And I'm gonna be in there helping uh, teach everyone uh, about this new event that we're doing in the evenings at Rockstar Connect. Raise your hand, uh, panelists that are gonna stay with us into the 3 p.m. hour. Okay, great, terrific. Uh, those of you who are not going to stay with us into the 3 p.m. hour, uh, feel free to jump into the HIO Lounge. Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, some, you know, some new people that have jumped in, some new panelists. We'll start off with uh, Jeffrey Elliott. If you notice, he has the same last name as me. Uh, Jeffrey Elliott is my brother. I haven't seen him for a while, and I did not really realize that he is now uh, sporting uh, quite the beard there. No razor blades at your house? Yeah, I, I like to say I'm, I'm Stephen's younger and balder brother. Yes, but you definitely have more facial hair than me. I've been, been keeping up with the shaving pretty well. Uh, that is before the quarantine. This is, this is pre-quarantine beard. Okay, great. So my brother Jeff, he is an expert in uh, the culinary marketing field. He is a schmoozer. He is a networker like me. He's written uh, several books on cooking, and he represents clients all over the country in the culinary field. Uh, regarding restaurants right now, what trends are we seeing in the age of uh, being shut in and not being able to eat in restaurants per se? Well, the current restaurant trend is restaurants becoming soup kitchens. There's a lot of restaurants are chipping in to help feeding uh, a lot of the hungry people out there. Food security was very high before this started, and it's only gotten higher since it started. There are a lot of kids uh, who relied on their schools uh, to be maybe their only meal of the day, and with schools closed, uh, there's nowhere left to turn but to, to restaurants. The other trend is restaurants are doing pop-ups to support their own staff, because a lot of their staff, be they part-time or be they gig workers, don't qualify for unemployment. So they're doing fundraisers for their own staff. Uh, I have a friend, for those of you who are out in Boston, uh, who's got a couple barbecue restaurants in Boston called Smoke Shop, who's hosting a weekly pop-up and then giving the, saving just the money to host the next pop-up and then giving all the proceeds to his employees just to keep them going during this time. It's called Smoke Shop Barbecue, the chef's Andy husband. So when we talk about uh, food security, there's some very well-known organizations out there that, that, that aren't just popping up. They've been doing this for a while. Uh, who do you recommend that, that we look for online if we want to help uh, restaurants and also people that are hungry at this time? You could support your local restaurant association, and every major city has their own restaurant association. There's also the National Restaurant Association. Uh, Share Our Strength or No Kid Hungry is great for helping to feed hungry kids who are food insecure at this time. They've actually put together with a ton of celebrities this great all-in challenge where you can uh, buy raffle tickets to win like amazing packages from, you know, Brad Pitt's got a package on there. Uh, a lot of uh, famous chefs, Guy Fieri has a package on there. Uh, you, there's a walk-on role with Leonardo DiCaprio in a Scorsese film uh, you could win while doing good. Uh, Feeding America is another great site. Uh, Feeding America operates food banks all over the country. So, uh, Jeffrey, if you could take the opportunity uh, during this hour to drop some stuff in for our attendees, 
so they can uh, know how they can help uh, in the restaurant industry, we'd appreciate that. Just drop that into the chat and we'll make sure that that goes out to everyone as well. Uh, what clients could benefit from uh, a, a, a restaurant uh, PR guru like you right now? Well, I'm not just a restaurant PR guru. Mostly, I work with uh, CPG, consumer packaged goods, housewares. Uh, some of my clients are uh, Zoe and Jay Hung Home and uh, want a really cool new fun toy to play with. I'm working with a company called Birch Barrel, which is designed the first all-in-one uh, smoker, barbecue grill, and fire pit. Uh, it's hangs from a tripod so it can go on any ground whether it's uneven or not uh and it's portable you can take it wherever you go so once you do get out of the house and uh sports start back up you'll be the hit of the tailgate uh with a birch barrel yeah i think that uh andrew i think you should connect with my brother you guys should share information uh andrew's doing some great things uh with food out in uh, in uh, the Wilmington area in North Carolina. I also uh, want to welcome uh, to the panel now for our second hour, uh, Bruce Hill, who is here in North Carolina. He is a real estate coach uh, nationally, well-known. How are you helping your clients pivot right now? Uh, well, right now, um, by the way, thanks for having me on, Stephen. I, I do appreciate that. Um, right now, one of the things that we are really focused on is – how to um, parlay our content. I was on for the first hour listening to a couple of people talking about content. And, um, and I found that I'm seeing a lot of real estate agents and really small business owners across the board for that matter, who are diving into content. And all of their content is very much focused on their industry only. And in parlaying that, much like we would parlay a, a gambling bet, um, you are actually betting uh, that someone is going to resonate with you even more if you can turn some personal interests into uh, make personal connections with people based on interests and then tie your industry content in with it. It just so much more. This is something that I've been working on personally myself along with the agents, the, the people that really listen, listen so much more because now all of a sudden your content hits, the, hits home. So an example would be I like to scuba dive and I'm tying scuba diving into my content. Now I'm going to lose some people, but those that I connect with are going to go, not only is Bruce a real estate coach or is Bruce a, a listing agent who can sell my house, but he also has interests that are like mine. And that really drives home the connections that we have here when we can kind of parlay our interests with the interest of our audience along with the content that we have for, uh, based on our industry. Yeah, I, I think that, that that's great. Uh, I, I wonder, and I'm talking to my coaching folks, so and you're the coach I'm talking to right now, Bruce. Is now an opportunity to branch out into other forms of coaching as well? I mean, you're speaking to a real estate agent. You're coaching him. Can they introduce you to a lender at that point that you could also coach? Or what other types of opportunities is there to add extra revenue if you are a coach right now? Because we have a lot of coaches that are participating in this call, both as panelists as in, and attendees. You know, I think a lot of that depends on specifically what you coach. So if you are very much coaching on um, scripts and dialogues and very specific things for your industry, I do think that there's an opportunity to go across industries and maybe teach some of those other industries what you do more for the referral than anything else. Now, if you if what you do is you teach broad, so for me, me for example, I coach on a lot of branding that does cross industries. Mm -hmm. So it depends on whether you're going very specific dialogue and scripts um, that are only real estate or only mortgage or only um, small business in, in another sense, or if you have something wide. Now, if you are a niche coach, so if you consult in a, in a niche, you should definitely use this opportunity to break out of that niche, if for no other reason than to, uh, than to build referral partners with those people, even if you're not charging for it. Can I put you on the spot? Yes. 
because I'm, I'm, you're already getting nervous when I said that. <laughs> Uh, can you give us one one uh, icebreaker that we can use on a Zoom call, scripted, that's going to get the conversation going? Something universal. Oh my gosh! And you, I can come back to you. You think on it because I'll introduce Greg, and I'm going to come back to you, and I, I want you to give me reflect back on what's been working for you. Okay. Hey, I want to welcome uh, Greg McDaniel from California, and then I'm going to go over to Dominic, and that's going to give you plenty of time. <laughs> Bruce to think about that. Greg McDaniel, uh, California, uh, Danville, Walnut Creek, San Francisco, Silicon Valley. I was thinking about you last night because we were watching, you know, they put HBO free unlocked on, on our Hulu and uh, I took the time to be able to watch the last, uh, the, the latest season of Silicon Valley. <laughs> And I was thinking about, God, you have to deal with people like that every single day. Uh, every what are you, single day. What are you bringing us? What, what wisdom are you bringing us from uh, the, the West Coast today? I don't know, oh, man. Your Corona uh, shirt, by the way. Yes, I, had, I, I saw this in my, in my closet, and I had to rock the Corona shirt. It's just out of pure humor. Um, but, you know, some of the things that I think that I've talked about it a lot before and I've always talked about doubling down with video, but getting involved with your local communities. Um, I, I, had a, I had a uniquely interesting experience the other day. I know everyone's trying to say stand six feet apart or whatever the number is right now. Hashtag Corona. Um, but I was out filming uh, with me, my DJI, you know, gimbal and my, my phone and everything else. And I had and I had someone come up to me because I was out in San Francisco and I was filming the Bay Bridge or the, the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, for something I'm putting out to my database and they use with viral marketing. And it, it was, it was hilarious because I mean, we're obviously doing the whole staying apart from each other, but he saw me shooting. He's like, are you some sort of YouTuber? And I'm like, no, I want to say yes, but I'm not, but it kind of clicked in my brain. What um, I'm not sure who I, who I came in and was talking about kind of going, doing local stuff, but um, I'm finding that, you know, getting out there and having uh, conversations with your local businesses and trying to bring them together. So like, like Stephen, like something that you do extremely well is you connect people, right? You say, Hey, you should go talk to this person or go talk to that person or whatever else. Cause there's value there. What about doing the exact same thing for local businesses that may or may not be open? Because, you know, a lot of folks are just forgetting about the local dressmaker, the cake maker, you know, the local brewery, you know, the things that you can't get into. What about connecting those two? So let's say you have a pretzel maker. I'm totally making this shit up as I go. Making a pretzel maker with a beer or a brewery with, you know, with, you know, a, like, a, like a safe Uber driver, right? You know, connect everyone together and see how all these businesses can work in harmony and then feature them on like a live Zoom call, put them onto a blue jeans or do something. I, I use a system called StreamYard, uh, which is incredibly powerful. Um, and so one of the things that I, I started doing is I started just connecting a lot of these folks and it was impactful beyond words. People like literally get emotional about it when you get in there trying to help bring more business to, to the folks that are around you versus mm -hmm. trying to pump yourself up or trying to do the sales pitch or, or anything else. So that's just something that I'm seeing right now is just being the connector, being the Stephen David Elliott of your own local neighborhood. Get, get these people connected, bring the value to them because the reason why is, is it going to put money in your pocket right now? No, it's not. What it's going to do is going to pay the, you know, pay the, you know, um, pay it forward significantly. So when we come out of all this and we are, we are going to come out of this. Like who, who's talking about the barbecue? All of a sudden I, I heard the smoker barbecue conversation. And I'm like, um, yeah, ship on to California. I'm in. Uh, but I mean, if you can get these people. Jeff, he's a big influencer. If you want to get that product out there, that's one of his clients. <laughs> Man, that sounds amazing. But I guess what I'm saying is just go out there and just connect with local businesses. And because the people that walk through those front doors have relationships and bonds with people that you couldn't build that relationship with in the amount of time that they have. Because these people are walking in the front door, paying them good hard cash for a product or service. And then if they refer you like, hey, man, I heard about this Greg, guy, Greg McDaniel, who's a local real estate agent. He's kind of a wackadoodle. But you know what? He's pretty good. He helped me grow my business. You know, if you guys are thinking about buying or selling, here's his card or here's his name or here's his contact information. It just opens multiple doors. It, it's, it's great because uh, what you're talking about is giving that value proposition. And that, that's the way, you know, I started my real estate career 10 years ago. I had my networking event and I had my guerrilla marketing experience uh, from running my own business for you know, almost two decades. And I would go into people's business and say, you know, uh, I'm the representative of, uh, at that time I was with Caldwell Banker, 
of Caldwell Banker, and I am an expert in marketing, and I'm going to be doing some events around here, and I am a free resource to you. If you ever want to spitball things or get ideas or participate or be connected to one another, I'm your resource. And I didn't done that previously in my other businesses, and then it just really applied well to commission business. And most of our panelists and, and almost all of our attendees, none of us get a, a, a paycheck. You know, we create our own paycheck. So one of the things you always have to have is a value proposition. I mean, that's what Rockstar Connect is. Our event is a value proposition that our hosts are able to give to their attendees. Our hosts just happen to be very successful, busy people. They're excellent at making connections. They just can't deal with... Uh, you know, all the rigmarole and the logistics and everything of putting an event. And that's what we do with Rockstar Connect. We're the roadies for the Rockstar. And you attendees, you are the, the brand evangelist and the raving fans for our hosts. I'm going to segue into introducing uh, one of our fantastic hosts. And we're going to come back to you, Greg, so don't go anywhere. Because we want to see what toys you're using. Uh, Dominic, hey, Steve. tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, my name is Dominic Battistella. So I'm a business financial services uh, advisor with New York Life Insurance Company. I'm in the Raleigh-Durham area of North Carolina, working primarily in the Research Triangle Park. Uh, so I work with businesses throughout their financial life cycle. So from the beginning, helping protect their investments uh, to getting employee benefit solutions and uh, and different programs for highly compensated employees in place, and then uh, working with those same businesses on business continuation solutions and estate planning. So can, I've been listening. Can I interrupt for a second? Yeah, sure. That's all really boring. Yeah, it is. I want to hear about your speakeasy event that you've yeah, been. Yeah, I was. I was just going to mention <laughs> I'm talking about. Uh, He's doing something really good. That's really cool. That people are interacting and engaging. <laughs> So you, you were talking about uh, content and content that drives eyes and, and gets people interested in you and, and getting to know you more personally. So like Andrew, I am a former chef of 20 years and uh, you know we've just been having this thing in our house where Heather and I can't get a date night. We've got three teenagers and there's nowhere to go and we've got to get out of the house. So like you, the garage to us was a vacation, but we turned it uh, more of it from a vacation into another business where we've opened up a Carolina Hurricanes themed uh, restaurant bar and speakeasy. And now I'm generating all my personal social media content, piping it through a fake business page that I made for my garage and am getting far more engagement through that and then sharing that. I mean, my garage has almost 100 followers now. It's got its own website, Instagram page, Twitter account. Uh, it's, it's a bit ridiculous. I may have gone over the top with it, but I tell you what, it's, it's, it, it's helping people find out a little bit more about who I am, what I do, and, and they wanna find out more. So are you saying that you want uh, Andrew, Greg, and Jeff to be, be hosts? Uh, they certainly can, and we can certainly throw an event at the speakeasy. But, you know, I was just thinking of other suggestions. You know, if you wanted to follow the tales of Stephen's wild and wonderful hairdo of the day, I mean, if you made a page dedicated to that, I'm sure people would follow that. And you'd have like, you know, 3,000 uh, people subscribe to the page in about 24 hours. Why don't you go ahead and do that, Stephen? Because I'm afraid that I'll lose my hair in a little bit. Because I last night I was going crazy. I took these big two giant chip clips. Yeah. And I put them in my hair to hold it back, but largely to entertain, to entertain okay. my wife. That's She's now saying that we should dye my hair pink for the next, for the next show. It's, it's very much a possibility that she will get me to have a drink or two and possibly do that. You could, so you could do that and you could take donations and whoever donates the most gets to pick the dye color. Okay, well, well, we'll think, see how drunk I have to get to do that. I don't well, drink look, that it's, much. So. It's, it's, it's all about generating revenue, and in this market, you can't really turn down any opportunity. 
Yeah, as far as revenue, I want to thank uh, the, our hosts uh, from Rockstar Connect that are, are still continuing to send in their checks every month to keep Rockstar Connect open so that we're able to serve you in live events in the future. And also the panelists that have, you know, have come and actually made contributions uh, to Rockstar Connect uh, so that we can pay our phenomenal staff and keep them open. Now, this is not to put money into Sarah in my pocket. That's just to keep you know, the largest networking company in the United States afloat. Uh, Sarah is going to drop in uh, a link where you can become a panelist uh, with Rockstar, uh, you know, one of these panelists. You do have to go through an interview, though. This is not a pay and play. You have to have something of value to bring to the table uh, and something that you can share with our attendees. Uh, we're broadcasting this to all of our Facebook groups, so hundreds of thousands of people will see it. We're sending it out to our mailing list. So don't be insulted if if you want to be a panelist and we can't accept you, even though you've made a contribution, we can only bring the best to the best, just like our events are the best. If you're an attendee to our events, our events are always free. You can come to this event for free, but you can also make contributions on our website and you can make contributions in uh, the chat here as well. I'd like to introduce one of our new panelists, uh, Ryan McCormick. Uh, Ryan is uh, uh, the PR firm the face of the PR firm that does a PR for Rockstar Connect and other very famous uh, people and organizations uh, all around the country. And I'm glad that he could come on today. He's also a very funny guy. He's, uh, uh, well, I don't want to say you're a comedian, but you are. He MCs these big uh, comic events around the country that raise money for charity. Uh, welcome, Ryan. Ryan, you need to unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, that's that's better. 100. Thank you for your kind words, Stephen. Great honor to be here. I'm a, I'm a sales center comedian. I was in New York for a while. It was awful. But uh, yeah, so Ryan is in shutdown with uh, well, with your wife, and your wife is yeah, pregnant. How many months? Uh, I'm going into the nine month right now. So, so that is a that is a unique experience. How is shutdown an experience like that? Well, it, it, I guess it's pretty good. I'm losing more hair than I ever thought I, I was capable of. I mean, I, it just grows back and it just falls out. And that, that's just even before the kid happens. So, you look so thin like you haven't been eating or anything. You should really have a sandwich. Oh, no, no. I, no, I, I haven't been able to pry myself away from the dinner table. You need a crowbar to do that. I, I got to start uh, getting on that treadmill and getting back up there. But uh, it's, I'll tell you what, it's a unique experience. Wife's downstairs, I'm upstairs, and just work all day. And so you have some pretty famous clients. There's a lot of trends going on in public relations. What's the trend in public relations in 2020, and how are you serving some of your famous clients? The biggest trend we've seen in PR is the fact that a lot of these networks, national and local networks, will take Skype interviews. We were doing that before, but now it's happening a lot more. So if you have something timeless and topical and you can even gear your pitch towards a local station, you can do that via Skype. There are many more opportunities to get out of there, especially as it pertains to coronavirus. So a lot of people out there right now, I mean, face to face is tough, but it's, the Skype opportunities are, are, are booming. And if you do anything related to mental health or online learning, those are two really big stories that are out there right now. Stuff for kids, homeschooling. Homeschooling, also on learning online. There's this a uh, lot of, if you're doing anything that relates to learning online or any type of engagement like that, that's pretty popular. There's a lot of surge. There's actually been a big boost in online networking, similar to what you're doing right now. I mean, this is, this is good, great that you're doing this because this is what uh, is emerging right now. So media is really concerned about coronavirus. So they're looking for mental health topics about that. They're looking for people who can add something to it. And they're looking for new businesses that are going to emerge from this. As far as my industry goes, it really has not changed that much, except for the fact that a lot of bigger PR firms, I think that they are kind of going away a little bit because they have these big offices. So I don't know how these bigger PR firms can manage a team all remotely. I think you need to have some face-to-face, -face, but the smaller firms, I think that they're sticking around for a while. Yeah, I would imagine a lot of the bigger firms probably have a you know smaller staff than you now. Because they, they can't, can't connect with their staff. Not to say that you have a you know, small firm, but he has what's called a boutique firm. He's serving very specific clients. Uh, Greg, uh, 
Ryan has a very, he has a podcast he's been running now for about 10 years. How many listeners are on that, and is that grown now, or what's going on? Several with- thousand listeners that are on there right now, and I had the opportunity, I guess, to, to get a couple sponsors for it. I, I don't, I haven't really pursued them much because it's so much of a labor of love. Like I just do it whenever I can and put it up whenever I can, and the business always takes top priority. So what's great about the podcast is I recommend any of you out there have one. Interview people that you consider to be your mentors. Interview people that you respect. Interview people that you'd like to do business with. Because if you do a really wonderful interview, they could take that and repurpose it. So as far as uh, the podcast that I do, which is called The Outer Limits of Inner Truth, it's more metaphysical, spiritual based. We have a lot of mental health experts. We've had some celebrities that are on there. Doing that show has actually been able to get, been able to get some clients. I've had people that I've interviewed that have become clients. I've had listeners who've hired me. Uh, to be their, their 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 firm, and so I highly recommend if you're out there and you're very passionate, get a get a show going. Get a really good uh, show. It, it's it's very I, I would say to my panelists and also to the attendees that are here, but it's specifically my panelists. They should be scheduling as time allows a call with Ryan, because Ryan has gotten myself and Rockstar Connect hundreds of placements in media, both nationally and locally. Uh, articles printed. Uh, in addition to that, just to, to brainstorm with them. If you're having a problem in your company, like you, you might you know you might have done something you thought it was right and it wasn't right, it was wrong, and you need to to turn around the ship. You know, reach out to Ryan. So, so uh, yeah. I've been connecting people on the panel. I really think it would be advantageous, you know, for you to connect. And I've been trying to connect you and Greg. I don't know whether you guys ever spoke to one another. Sure. Oh, and I know you've been, I've been trying to connect the two of you for years now. And uh, Dominic, with what you're doing, it would be great. Uh, Ryan, you've never had the opportunity to meet my brother, Jeffrey, who I told you does uh, you know, PR in the culinary industry. Uh, so you, And I've tried to connect the two of you as well. Now is a good time to do it good. and move forward. Uh, Doug has a new book out. It just came out today. Uh, you and Ryan should uh, definitely speak with What's one of What's the book about? What's the, what's the book about? Uh, you're, you're muted. Yeah, sorry. Uh, actually, I have two books. I just messaged you, Ryan. One is called Under Construction, Navigating the Detours on the Road to Recovery. Um, okay. So I, mental health is a big topic of mine. But um, this book is called The Heart of Networking. Um, and it's about how to network more effectively, more efficiently, to be a connector rather than just a networker, the serial networker. Uh, it was born out of all my years on the road with Tony Robbins. That was how I built my business was I would infiltrate a new, I mean, I wish Rockstar was around when I was on the road with Tony because I'd have you opening up like everywhere we went. If there wasn't a rock star, we'd get one going for you because uh, that was my MO. I would just go in and connect with all the leaders in a certain city. And I did that around the country for years and uh, helped me be very successful as a top trainer for Tony. Um, so now what I found, I worked in the treatment field for many years. And then, uh, when I went back in full core into networking again, uh, the same challenges existed. People either just, you know, verbal diarrhea or, uh, you know, just trying to close you right on the spot and never even ask a question like to even learn about you. Uh, so I just figured this was a great time to update my book. I added some content around virtual networking and really about connecting, about giver's gain, about resource sharing, about follow through, booking an appointment. Like, don't just say, hey, you know, see you next month, next meeting, but to actually book a meeting and follow through and and how to be uh, really another human being working in this uh, journey. Awesome. I think that you guys should definitely connect. He could be real value on your podcast. And uh, Greg, I think those people out on the West Coast, they'd love to hear what Doug has to say too. I don't know if you guys have connected before. Uh, we, can 100%. Definitely, we can definitely start. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I think that uh, you know Andrew and Dominic have the potential to be really good friends. And uh, they think very similar to one another. They're both chefs that went off into other careers. Uh, later in life. And of, of course, Jeffrey is uh, a chef. Uh, my brother, Jeffrey, has uh, two cookbooks that you can purchase right now on Amazon. And both of them are skills-related cookbooks. They're not, they're not recipes. 
They're designed to teach you knife skills, which are very important. As you can see, I cut myself this morning with uh, cutting my bagel because I, as I told the kids, I was doing it in a hurry. Uh, last month, I dropped a, two months ago, I dropped a chef's knife into my foot, about an inch into my foot, but that, that was life changing, I have to tell you. But Jeffrey has a great book. It is the book on, on knife skills. You can purchase it on Amazon. He'll drop that into uh, the chat. But he has a newer book. It's only, at this point, I think two years old now. Uh, five year, the sushi book is five years old. Uh, what's the name of your sushi book? So the first book, uh, which has been in print for 10 years, is available in five languages, uh, is The Zwilling J. Henkel's Complete Guide to Knife Skills. And the second book is The Complete Guide to Sushi and Sashimi. And that's been out for five years. I think that Knife Skills is in its ninth printing. However, uh, books are low priority for Amazon right now, so they are out of a lot of books. In fact, in a couple weeks, they may be out of pretty much every book. They're only stocking essential items, uh, medical items, food items, and things like that. And books have gone way down on the priority list. So it may be a couple weeks before it's back. Uh, in stock. Well, I, I'm going to give I'm going to give a shameless sort of plug here for my brother because he's my brother. But uh, he right now you can actually reach out to him. You know, in the chat, reach out to him personally. He is doing knife skill courses and and uh, rudimentary sushi courses, but also at the beginning and uh, the intermediate and advanced level. This is only available to him, you know, one-on-one -on -one right now because we're all shut in and he's in Pennsylvania, which is about the most, most shut down states of shut down states, much more so than, than even New York. Uh, you can have the opportunity to speak with him directly. He will give you some skills at a, a very reasonable price and you can come out of this, you know, knowing how to you know use knives like one of the foremost experts in knives in the world who happens to be my brother hey is mark share still here is is it just his picture up there because i want to have him talk a little bit during this hour there he is. Hey, mark i didn't know whether you're here because you sort of looked invisible can you unmute yourself muted. mark is mark you're muted Okay, he's, we're having trouble with his, he'll be right back, I guess, is what he's saying. Uh, we'll get back to him. But, uh, Greg, uh, wait, Bruce, I had a question for Bruce. Did he leave? No, he's there. Okay, Bruce, do you have, what's, what's the line? What are, what's your golden line that everyone should be using this week? In oh, the golden Zoom? line? Golden line? Oh, yeah. That's not, that's not the way that I took your question. Okay, well, to answer my question the way All you right. took it. I'm, so, I'm, uh, I probably forgot what I said. No, it was icebreaker, icebreaker, icebreaker and I, that's what I, I feel mean. like um, I feel like the answer was right in front of me the whole time, um, and it, it goes to interest so often in networking, whether it's virtual or or not. We spend all our time telling people what we do and almost selling ourselves. When um, in reality, the intro should be, if it's if it's not business related, the intro should be something unique that we like to do outside of work because that's where we're really going to build rapport i could say i'm a real estate agent and steven you'd, you'd say hey me too and we'd have some rapport there but for all the non-real estate agents here they're just going to go okay yeah another another real estate agent um but if i say well, you know i don't introduce myself that way but go ahead go yeah, ahead okay got it uh if we say uh i like to play tennis i golf i scuba dive i do something like that um, and that should be the real icebreaker. It's not going to break the ice with everyone, but those that, that it does, it resonates with. Absolutely. I mean, when people ask me what I do, I say I'm in the opportunity business. What opportunity would you like to discuss? Mm -hmm. And uh, because you know, there's so many things that I'm interested in, and the beauty of networking is that it, it enables you to uh, put on many hats. So, Mark, are you unmuted now? I hope so. You love to do some role playing. You, you're the role play guy. What are you? What do you say now to a client? You, you do mostly phone, but now you're doing a lot of uh, digital and Zoom calls and things like that. What would be your icebreaker at the beginning of a conversation that people can utilize here? And, and keep in mind, Mark, how many years of sales experience do you have and uh, assisting people? Quite a few. 
Um, he started when he was five. So, my, my one of my favorite things um, to ask people is, you know, they're always going to get around to what do you do for a living, and I always tell them I ask questions for a living, and then they don't know what to say, and then they go, what kind of questions? And that opens the door for me for what we do is you know. Or if we can make sure how to get out of debt in nine years or less, including your mortgage and student loans, if you have any, try to get 20 minutes of your time. That's the one that I like the best. Hey, can we do a little role play between you and Mark? Mark, can you unmute yourself? Hey, Mark, can you, okay, so Mark is one of your people in your target audience. You love to speak to, to real estate agents, lenders, uh, bookkeepers. Mark has a, a bookkeeping company why don't you guys have a little bit of role play for us here how you would start doing business with one another and i'll let you take the the lead mark let's say hey mark how you doing my name is mark Scher, and you're gonna say i'm fantastic how are you what do you do well i teach people financial literacy how do you do that well I'll give you a quick example um Sure, you've heard this before from someone like your parents, someone you trust, your best friend, a CPA, or a financial planner. The following statement It's good to have a mortgage because you get to write off the interest. Have you heard that before? I have. Well, let me tell you how I think it works. And I'm just going to use a 24% tax bracket for this example. I would say, yeah, Mark, I've heard that as well, but I have a question for you. How long would you play this game with me? You give me $100, I'll turn around and give you back $24. Not too long. Personally, I wouldn't play it once, but think about this. Every $100 you're giving to a bank or a mortgage lender, are they giving you back $24? No. The only thing that happens is you get to write $24 off the adjusted gross income on your tax return if your mortgage is less than $750. How great is that? It's not that great. So most people at that point are going to invite me to tell them more. And I'm just going to say, look, that's really not the time and place to go into that. But why can I get 20 minutes of your time? And then I pull out my calendar. Great. And that's one, you know, that's, that's one of the ways that I do it. So it's, you have to, you feel that it's important to have a list of questions that you ask someone that you can potentially be going into some sort of relationship, whether it be a business relationship or a referral relationship. Well, basically, again, you're asking me from my perspective, you know, I'm looking at it with blinders on from what I do specifically, you know what I'm saying? And my goal is to make people realize that they really don't understand because most people rely, let's just say, on their financial planner or CPA. And a lot of people, when I ask them that question right there, they sometimes get a little upset, not at me, they're mad at themselves because they're paying a CPA or they're paying a financial planner. And they realize that what I just told them, no one's ever said it to them like that before, but there's no other way to look at it. That's the only way mortgage interest works. There's no gray area, glass half full, glass half empty. And then I'm doing the takeaway because I'm saying, now's not the time. So they're obviously going to want to learn more. Keep them wanting, keep them wanting a little bit more. That's a good technique. Bruce, you had your hand up. You wanted to comment on something that uh, the Mark shared. Yeah, what Mark shared, I, f I find that a lot of uh, a lot of people, especially in our networking events, that ask us what we do. Um, many times they're just waiting to get to what what they do, or what's important to them, and that's okay. We have to recognize that and be prepared to give them what they want, which is to share what's important with them. And another thing uh, on top of that, and, and for those of you not in the real estate world, um, you're gonna have to kind of draw a parallel here. Um, but many times in the real estate world, we find uh, people asking, oh, how's the real estate market? And, um, and I tell my agents that a lot of times um, we give the answer of how our business is doing. So we go, oh, it's amazing, it's great. Or if the, how's the financial business? It's, it's the best. And we're answering what our experience with it currently is. 
when that's not the question that they're asking. They're asking, how's the real estate market for me? And so the better we become at asking questions in rich, uh, as an answer to their question, uh, the more conversations we're going to go into. So, for example, Stephen, if you were to ask me, how, how's the real estate market? I would simply just say, you know, experience shows that a lot of it depends on where you live. Um, by the way, which neighborhood do you live in? Excellent. And immediately you start talking, okay, how do you like the neighborhood? And I can't tell you how many people I've met for the very first time. I've never met them before. And I say, what, which part of the area do you live in? And they tell me, and I say, I love that area. How do you like it? And they go, uh, uh, immediately I know that's an opportunity to dig in a little bit deeper and potentially give them a service. And I do the same thing with real estate agents in the financial world. I do the same thing. We answer, most of the time we spend that, that time answering what our experience in that industry is when that's not what they're asking at all. Well, I, I mean, it's great because what you're saying is I've used that as a social media post where I'll say, what do you like about your neighborhood? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will come back and will say a lot of great things about their neighborhood. And then other people say, I hate my neighborhood. I don't like my neighbors. The street's too busy. And that's when I message them and say, hey, we, we need to have a little bit of a conversation. I want to know more about what your needs are. And I want to know more about that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's excellent. So a lot of what we're saying, a lot like what Mark is talking about and what Bruce is talking about, those are things that can be turned into social media posts that will get you engagement. And that's where I talk about you know, leveraging a large sphere of influence. So my sphere of influence is very big in my local area and nationally and utilizing questions like like Mark uh, says to utilize and Bruce agrees with gets people to engage with me and that allows me to get a listing or sell a property or go into a joint venture partnership and it helps everyone you're doing that needs assessment through your questions Greg you do a, a lot with with scripting and and helping other real estate agents uh, and ultimately with clients. What, what are your thoughts on this discussion? I think this, everything needs to be scripted to some level, uh, to some degree. You can't just go out there willy-nilly. You got to have an idea of what you're going to be talking about. But scripts are typically what I've experienced them as. They're basically your backbone and ribs. And when I, when I say that, this is what I mean. Your, your, your script is your backbone. It's, it's what keeps you upright when you're going through a conversation. And your ribs are the little offshoots that will help you personalize with that other person and relate to them. Um, you know, if, if someone's a, 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 someone said they're a scuba diver or, or chefs or whatever else, you can go off on tangents. But as long as you have that, that same script going forward, you'll be able to humanize yourself significantly. One of the, the easiest and best scripts on planet Earth is, is called Ford. Are you guys familiar with Ford at all? family, occupation, recreation, and then dreams. Um, it can be frog, family, occupation, family, occupation, recreation, or goals. Now, what this series of questions will do, and this works fantastically for any of you guys that are single, you're going on dates. Uh, this is, you can ask questions about any of these different subject matters, not in any particular order, but you'll allow the other person to draw, you'll draw them out and allow, have them talk about themselves because we all know that we're all our favorite topic of conversation, right? So when you forward on somebody, um, you'll be able to get them to really start to like you. And that's my, the, the best script. If you've got to go meet your mother-in-law or your father-in-law, your sister or your grandma or your best friend you haven't seen for a while, whatever, you know, just ask about these, those, those key areas, family, occupation, recreation, and then dreams or goals. And people open up like a, like a book um, and you'll be able to get a lot of them you know, coming out and then asking questions about you because the law of reciprocity kicks in. Once you, once they know that you actually give a rat's rear end about them, then they're going to want to do something to benefit your life in some way, shape or form. Um, you know, one of my team managers, she uh, yelled at one of our old team members because he was like, Greg, does everything that you, you know, how do you know what to say? And she just yells at him because everything he blanking does is scripted. And I thought about this and I'm like, Hmm. You know, when you do something for long enough, you kind of just all of a sudden you just kind of fall into the into the in, into that same conversation in your mind. It just kind of comes out like it's like it's no big deal. And everyone's looking for that perfect script. There is no perfect script. Okay, just go out there and just keep in the back of your mind, bring value, do the best you can to help other people that are around you. The script will flow because you're going to be naturally thinking about what you can do to bring value to other people. 
my, uh, my dad started real estate 48, 48 years ago, uh, back before any of this technology stuff. I mean, a rotary phone was high tech for him. Uh, but he would go out door knocking in Boulder, Colorado in the snow. Uh, and he didn't know anyone. He just got married to my mom, didn't have any money, is flat broke. But he went out there with the mindset and he, this was his script. Everybody likes me, they just don't know me yet. And how can I bring value to somebody? It's a great script. I, I mean, there are some things that I have probably said a hundred thousand times in my life, a million times. And I don't even know that it, it, they were scripted initially. It may have been something that I said that elicited the right response in other people that helped them to make decisions and improve their life. And it just becomes, it becomes part of your psyche. You know, so everyone here that's on this panel, they are, uh, you know, phenomenal salespeople. And, and that's to me the highest compliment to call someone a salesperson. Because when you're a salesperson, you're really facilitating other people's uh, ability to fulfill their needs. So I started off as a geriatric social worker. And what I learned as a geriatric social worker was for my clients, I had to locate every option that was out there for my clients. Then I would limit them to the best options, and then I would assist them in selecting amongst those best options. Raise your hand if that sounds like what you do every day here and you're not a social worker. I mean, we do that every day. All of us do that every day. That is in order to serve your client and to help them find those best options and select them. You have to be very careful in what you say to them because they are giving you, they want you to give them permission to do what they know is right for them. What am I saying? They want you to give permission. Before they used to go to their mom and they used to go to their dad. I mean, I did that all the time. Their mom, mom and dad say, you're adults now. You, you know, I don't want to make that decision for you, but we still need help in, in making those decisions. So it's good to have a strategy when you go about anything in your business, whether that be you know, Facebook or, or making phone calls or even LinkedIn. And I have to tell you, LinkedIn is, is the, the, what is it, the 500-pound gorilla in the room. We don't know exactly how to use it. We're all starting to use it. Some of us actually have scripts and they have great LinkedIn strategies. And Dominic is, is phenomenal with LinkedIn. And him and I have had a lot of sessions where we discussed how to utilize LinkedIn. What strategies would you like to share uh, with the attendees and the other panelists? Sure, Stephen. Uh, so uh, first of all, I want to just set, uh, address something that Greg said is providing value, uh, no matter what it is, is extremely important in your interaction with anybody. It is such a powerful thing to do that the federal government literally does not allow its employees to accept gifts from contractors of more than $5 because it creates such a strong reciprocal uh, subconscious need to give back that they don't want their employees and potential uh, people who are responsible for man managing contracts to uh, have a, a conflict of interest because of that. So always give value if you are in business. And I think we're all here giving great value. Uh, so as far as the LinkedIn thing, I want to give a couple of pieces of value. Uh, always work smarter and not harder. I think Stephen is definitely a huge proponent of this. And on LinkedIn, there's something that you can do that uh, will really expand your reach and expand the amount of connections that you have without doing lifting a finger. So uh, this is something that I found a couple of years ago, and it is a uh, it is a plugin for Google Chrome, and it's called Linked On. That's L I N K E D O N one word dot I O. And what it does is that it is a system that will automatically send out connection requests each and every day. And it will send a connection message that you choose. And you can even add their, uh, their first and last name or just first name in there to personalize it. And then once those people have accepted your connection request, 
then you can set them up on a string of messages that you can personalize and it sets up a drip campaign for you through LinkedIn Messenger. Now, we can all set up drip campaigns through email, but how many people, you know, they, they look at their, uh, um, the numbers on their email and how many unopened emails or bounced emails do you get? But it's almost 100% of the time people are going to read a LinkedIn message that you send them. So if you can send them five, 15, 50, 100 LinkedIn connections every day and you get a portion of those people to accept your connection request and then put them on a drip campaign for six or seven messages long. Now, how long would it take you and how many messages would you send in the course of one month, five months, a year? I, I, I would venture to say that I probably send about 20 million, uh, 20, 20 million, 20,000 uh, LinkedIn messages every single year just using this tool. And I've expanded my uh, LinkedIn network tenfold just using this tool. So that's linkedin.io. Um, it's, it's a great thing to do. Uh, and and it, it helps you on LinkedIn work smarter, not harder. Uh, the, the last little bit, um, if you are going to be a networker and make connections for people, LinkedIn is a great place to do it. And one of the best ways to do it is just send an introductory message to two people that you want to bring together for a purpose. Uh, Stephen Warm Kennedy, introductions. Yeah, introductions. It's a mutual introduction via a LinkedIn message, and it works fantastically. And I've even connected Stephen with a handful of people uh, this week just that way. Uh, one person from my company who may be able to introduce him to several different people who will are, are interested in doing a Rockstar Connect event. So, I mean, that's how easy it is to play the connector and bring value to people via LinkedIn. Being a connector is is a hundred percent probably the most valuable thing you can do as a leader is to connect other people together. And every person on this panel has connected me to someone else, and hopefully I have done the same uh, for them. I mean, you notice a lot of us are looking down. That's because you know we're answering questions in the chat. It's not because we're disengaged. Uh, Greg, uh, are you familiar with that LinkedIn app? Uh, I imagine that you're getting ready to, to engage it now after Dominic just spoke. Uh, I'm now familiar with it. I uh, am currently uh, downloading it onto my computer as, as we actually speak. Um, it's something that's always interesting. You know, LinkedIn is that crazy little beast that we don't know, really know what to do with it. Um, and it's, it's kind of like we're all going to be the dog that chases the car. And then once we catch, catch the car, what the hell do we do with the damn car? And so it's like learning how to speak on LinkedIn once you get there. And Dominic, I'd love to hear kind of your thoughts on this one. You know, what are the what are the types of conversations that you have on on LinkedIn? Because I know that's a, it's it's a it's a different it's a it's a different beast, right? So you speak one way on, on Facebook, one way on Instagram, one way on one way on TikTok, one way on now LinkedIn. So do you have to not wear Corona shirts and baseball hats? Do you have to be professional? Do you have to be yourself? I mean, what is what was the, the layout look like? So my layout on LinkedIn is um, I utilize it as a, uh, it, it is my main hub for my marketing and promotions for my business. I don't set it up like a, uh, just a, a digital um, resume like a lot of people do because they look at it as a, as a job seeking site. I, I use it to contact other business people because those are the type of people that I do business with. So it's a great B2B marketing tool and everything that is on my LinkedIn page is set up strictly to promote my business from a consistent professional headshot to a, a background image that has exactly who I am, how you can get in touch with me, and the type of things that I do, the types of services that I provide to businesses, and all of it's above the fold without having to click uh, you know, on a link to find out what my contact information is. And then as you scroll further down, you get more information about what my business is, who's reviewed, uh, uh, recommended me, what I've been recommended for, uh, and, and a number of other things that connect with the business. 
as far as the uh, drip campaign that I was referring to earlier, because I'm in the financial field, I have certain restrictions on what I can say because of com my compliance department. So I can't send financial information via the drip campaign. But what I can do is send different kinds of information that might be relevant to my audience. So uh, connecting with, um, with business owners about what they might be wanting to look at as far as marketing during the COVID crisis or recommending a podcast that I find valuable and listen to. And in providing those things, I can then have asks during the drip campaign such as, hey, uh, would you have any objection if I added you to my professional mail list? I won't spam you, but I'm just gonna send you like the occasional birthday card or something like that. Or, hey, uh, if, if you'd be interested, um, I'd love to buy you a cup of coffee. And then it, it's after I've provided them something, but you know, I get more times than not, somebody will say, yeah, let, let's get together. Or I can't do coffee, but let's have a phone call. And all of that drip campaign is intended to create engagement. Once you have the engagement and you have people who you're, you're in a conversation, now it's just it just flows like any other business conversation, whether it's over text or you arrange a call. Also, um, I mean, you if you have an event, if you have a networking event, it's small events, big profits, offer your networking event on your LinkedIn. Instead of saying, I wanna connect with you because I wanna sell you stuff, I want you to join my network so we can all expand our business that you're partnering with them. And it's an honest value that you can add. I mean, Mark does this, this all the time. That's how he utilizes his event. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that, Mr. Roberts? Absolutely. Uh, I want to you know, jump on what Dominic said and agree with, I think everything he said. Um, yeah. The, the LinkedIn is my professional profile. Um, as a recovering or former attorney, uh, I've always used that, so I've been on LinkedIn for what seems like forever, a couple decades now. Um, I do something a little different. I don't share my, my contact list, so if you click on my profile, you can't see who I'm, I'm linked to. Uh, that's kind of a little bit of my the legal background. I just don't you know, share people unless I do it. So I do an awful lot of my introductions are through, through LinkedIn. Uh, in fact, when we do the Rockstar events, and I tell people I want to connect you to Dominic. He's the guy you have to talk to for financial services. I'll normally do that through LinkedIn for a couple different reasons. One, the two profiles are connected when you do an introduction like that, or you can easily check on it. Two, you can you know take the extra little tidbits of someone's background that you don't always remember, so you can do a warm, good introduction. And then I always do that next step. I follow up to make sure that whoever I told contact Dominic did. Because if I'm putting out his name and his contact information, it's important enough that you should follow up. So I will do the, you know, the back work going, hey, if you're not going to call the people I'm telling you, I won't give you any more contacts. No more, no more warm introductions at that That's point. That's it. And then, yes, uh, most of my uh, events is pushed through LinkedIn, even more so than Facebook. Excellent. Yep. So uh, Bruce brought up an excellent point. If you don't have your own event, or even if you do have your own event, uh, something you can share is the events that you attend. Can, can you expound on that a little bit more, Bruce? Sure. Um, I believe that we, uh, if we're going to build a strong audience that we have great relationships with, we need to become master inviters, whether that's inviting to a coffee or a Zoom one-on-one -on -one or a networking event, whether we host the event or not. Being an inviter endears people to you. And when I invite people to things, um, most of the time, at least half don't come, but the half that don't remember the invitation. So if you are on this call and you're not a host, that's okay. You can still use these events um, as, as a tool that you can use to connect with your audience. You can invite them to the events um, and it really resonates very well with that audience that now you're, um, you're, you care enough about them to invite them to something that you care about. And it means a lot to those people. So, so Mark really liked the term super inviter. I think I'm gonna give you an assignment, Bruce. Why don't you write an article on being a super inviter and we'll distribute that through the Rockstar Connect Network. Now, whenever someone has something of value that you can distribute, 
give them the credit for that and, and, and share it so other people can learn from it. Uh, Ryan McCormick, we've been talking about questions. I want you to know, if anyone takes a one-on-one -on -one and has the, the opportunity or the privilege to have that one-on-one -on -one with Ryan McCormick, you're going to see that he is someone who really cares and he's an expert at asking questions. Do you do that with, with forethought or is that just your nature? I say it just naturally comes. Like when I do interviews on my uh, the, the podcast, I just I, I talk to someone and I generally have an idea of what I'm going to ask them. Like certain people I've interviewed, um, like Ron Paul or uh, Richard Belzer, I prepared some questions for them because I've wanted those interviews for a long time. So I put a lot of thought into them. Most of the time when I have someone on the show, it just the questions actually fly. I just have an instatable curiosity. And uh, I want to say, that, Dominic, I really enjoyed uh, what you said about LinkedIn. And I just have a quick question for you is that you connect with all these thousands of people on a regular basis. And I'm wondering, how do you, is there anyone on LinkedIn that you can build an inner circle? Because if you connect with all these people, how do you separate the prospects from the people that are considered to be your close circle, people you do business with on a regular basis, your inner circle? Is there any way that LinkedIn allows you to, to separate that? Can you categorize people? Can you add people to your so, quote unquote on LinkedIn gold list? Uh, sort of. Uh, you, you, um, so you have to invite them to something else, right? So you can create groups on LinkedIn and then kind of collate your, your list that way. So if you've got 5,000 connections, but you want your top 100 connections to be in a certain group, you can get all those people and add them to a group and then utilize that. So, uh, you know, I've got a group of people in the Raleigh Durham area that are considered uh, like kind of super connector type folks that I'm part of. And, uh, you know, that, that, that becomes a core group for me on LinkedIn, right? Uh, but there's not really a way to like Facebook, it's got friends, but then close friends or family, there's no way to, to really do that to my knowledge on LinkedIn. Now I could be incorrect. There is somebody uh, who is more of an authority on LinkedIn than me. I think Rhonda who was on in the first hour could probably answer that question better than me. Uh, so could like uh, Deb Mathias here in, in the uh, Raleigh Durham area is certainly somebody that I would ask about that. Yeah, Rhonda, Rhonda would be great. And, and Ryan, uh, I mean, you're just demonstrating my point that you're the king of questions. So okay. when I asked you a question, you made sure that you asked Dominic a question. But it serves you very well in business to have interest in the, in the other person. It's, it's, it's a great skill set. Uh, my brother was one of the first. Jeffrey, raise your hand. Raise your hand. I don't know if he's frozen there or if he can hear me. But uh, Jeffrey was one of the first people I know that, that had exceeded over 10,000 people on LinkedIn. And this was 10 years ago he had done that. He was recognized by uh, by LinkedIn as one of the uh, the highest connected people in the U.S. One percent of LinkedIn people. No, I, I was recognized as an early adopter. I was one of the first million people on LinkedIn, and that's how I, I accumulated. I tell you, I had a really funny experience with LinkedIn in the last couple of months. Uh, my account actually got hacked and hijacked, mm -hmm. and it was hijacked for about two days. And every single one of my contacts got spammed. And I went through, and as many as I could do, sent out apologies, saying, I'm sorry that this happened. This wasn't for me. My account was hacked. I've been able to get my account back. If you've clicked on any of the links, to, you know, reset your password, set on two-step verification. While I'm here, how are you doing? We haven't talked in a while. What's going on in your life right now? And I reconnected with a ton of old connections and got two prospects and one client out. You should be hacked every day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's an example of turning uh, lemons into lemonade. Hey, guys, we're coming up on, on the very end of this. I want to thank all our panelists uh, that uh, are on right now. Uh, you know, Doug McGurk, check out his book. Uh, Greg McDaniels, uh, check out his podcast. Connect with him on LinkedIn because I have a feeling uh, going from this call forward, he's going to be on LinkedIn all the time. We've been talking about LinkedIn for about two years, him and I. Uh, check out uh, Ryan McCormick. Uh, his information is there. You can listen to his podcast. Uh, Bruce Hill, you know, great rock star connect host. 
Uh, he'll, he has some consultations that he can give uh, for you. Uh, Mark Shear has uh, spoken about how important it is to understand uh, debt in the era of um, the CARE Act. Uh, his information is available there. If you want to drop your information because you want to speak to Mark or someone from his team, please do. Very important person to speak with. And Dominic, uh, what's the name of your speakeasy so people can go into that? When does it open next? It's, uh, it's H&D's uh, Kane's um, Quarantine Speakeasy. I'll actually... Uh, Real quick, drop the all the contact information in <laughs> the chat for that. Uh, but yeah, it's um, it's online, available on Facebook, Instagram, and everywhere where you are on social media. Great. So I have about thirty seconds left for the panelists. All of you P attendees and all of you panelists, feel free to drop drop into the Ohio Lounge and do some one-on-one -on -one connecting with one another. Uh, my, I want to thank the Rockstar Connect team for putting this together and doing it every week. This is our, is this our fourth one, our fifth one. This is our fifth one. We're going to be back next week. We have a special event. Uh, we are doing the networking component of Les Brown's uh, Big Summit uh, next week. We're going to be doing our, our martini lunch. We'll have uh, panelists from that summit. There are also uh, panelist opportunities if you would like to participate in that and uh, uh, of course our panelists have been making contributions to Rockstar Connect to keep the doors open you know Rockstar Connect is now like PBS uh, we welcome your contributions uh, for you attendees uh, you have the opportunity to become a panelist and interview to be a panelist and have yourself broadcast out to thousands of people so if you want to know about that Les Brown opportunity throw that in the chat and someone from my team We'll reach out to you. It's great to be on a panel, uh, you know, with such an important uh, speaker and motivational person like Les Brown. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Les Brown is he's before Anthony Robbins, so you know, old time, and that's what we want to know about old time uh, solutions. Thank you for all, all of you for joining the Three Martini Lunch National Virtual Networking Event, uh, powered by Rockstar Connect. We're going to exit the meeting right now. <laughs>